What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. We're still back here in Houston this time checking out a different card room. You can see it 52 social. Um, I've been told a bunch. I was hyped up a bunch to come check this place out. So here we are doing that um, today. Heard that there's a ton of action there. So we're playing there eating my Whataburger my meal before this this Whataburger is so good. I have to little patty melts for second time having it. I had it last night so good had to have it again and yeah we're about to, to hop into the one three here not your typical one three that's for damn sure um and i'm excited to see what the action's like in here so um there's that so that's the intro we're gonna hop in in a little bit and hop into the action so hopefully we keep on running things up so so far last three sessions here at champions that went really well now at 52 hopefully we can continue running things up so let's get into it Buying into the one three here at the normal Texas amount of a thousand dollars. First hand with Jack nine of hearts in the plus one. We have an ungun limper. I raise it up to twenty dollars, and we get three players to make the call. So we're going to a flop multi way. Flop comes Jack five six rainbow. Action checks to me, and with top pair, um, not really going to have to size up too big here. Mainly just to get value from draws or protect from overcards. I bet forty dollars, and only the on the gun limper makes the call. Going to a turn, which is the seven of spades, brings in the backdoor flush draw, and here. Here, when he checks to us, I think this is a perfect time to just check back as pot control. Um, board just super connected. There's a few two pair combos. And if he wants to check raise us, we're left in a pretty awful spot. So um, top pair with a gutter ball, we check it back. The river is a deuce, a total brick. And now he fires for $125. This is a pretty easy call. Uh, we checked to potentially induce a bluff or something like that. Um, anyways, we throw in the call with top pair. He has 8-6 of clubs, so we're taking this one down. <clears throat> Following hand, we have pocket jacks in the small blind. There are two limpers to an older gentleman on the button to my right. He's a pretty short stack, and he raises it up to $20.00. On to me here, um, pretty short stacked. Let's just isolate with a pretty good hand. I three bet to $80 and it folds all the way back around to him. He puts in the all in button of 175 total. Obviously in this spot, we're never folding. So we make the call. He asked to run it once or twice. Like I said, I'm always very indifferent about it. So I say, sure, let's run it twice, whatever you want. We're running it twice Texas style with only one flop and two turns and rivers. I think I had 9 4. I think I had 9 4. Oh. Oh, We're up against aces, so yeah, that wasn't good for us. We double him up real quick. We are. Uh we add on for $500 more after that, and now we're in for $1,500 total. Next hand, pocket threes in the big blind with a button straddle. We're sitting $1,400 deep, and preflop, this is a six-way limped pot, or limp called, whatever you want to call it, six-way called pot, I don't know. Basically, a limped pot with the straddle on, so six ways to a flop. Flop is ace, deuce, three, rainbow. This is perfect. Considering that we are out of position, there is definitely a lot of merit to uh, betting out and leading here. But with so many players in there, hoping someone can take a stab at it, action checks to the hijack, who throws out a bet of $20. And unexpectedly, the button and small blind call. So plenty of action to go around here with this hand. This is a very easy and standard check raise spot. So I don't want to make it too big, but we're out of position and I size to $115. Action folds back to the hijack, who unexpectedly puts in the jam? <laughs> it folds to me, and uh, I, I don't think I'm folding here ever. Um, it, it seems very nutted, honestly, for the $600 three bet jam. But uh, I can improve to boats, so that could be nice. Um, also, while I'm thinking about it, she says that she wants to go home, so we're in Texas. Let's uh, make the call. Uh, I'm not feeling amazing about it, but definitely going to be making the call. Let's hope to boat up. 
We don't boat up, but we still show our hand and it looks like we're good. Anybody driving a white brain Next hand after that, we have 5-7 of hearts on the button. There's an early position limper, um, the hijack raises it up to $20, the cutoff makes the call, and I'm in position here. This is my OG favorite hand. Uh, when I first started playing poker, 5-7 suited was just my favorite, so uh, I make the call here and the big blind calls, so like I said, plenty of action to be found on this table. The flop comes 7 high, it's 7, 3, 4, 2 clubs. Weird enough, action checks to me, and I think with top pair, multi-way, on a pretty draw-heavy board, I definitely have to bet here, um, just to protect top pair here, so I size up to $65. The big blind immediately check raises us to 200, and it folds back to me, and I tank for a while. I'm trying to think of things that he could be having here, so considering that he's on the big blind, he's definitely got a super wide range considering the price he was getting, so so he certainly can have 6-5 here, although I do block some commas of it. It doesn't necessarily have to be 6-5 suited as well, given that it's multi-way, so I'm definitely losing to a lot of combos with that. There's also some combinations of sets for sure. Um, but when I look it over, I only have to put 135 more to win 365. With our gutter ball as well here, with, along with the top pair, I decided to just make the call and evaluate some runouts. We're also playing 1500 effective as he definitely covers me by a lot. So um, with that said, I call and we're going to a turn. Turn is the four of diamonds and surprisingly he checks to me. Um, definitely not betting here again once he check raises us. Um, I do think this check is very interesting considering that sometimes he can slow play a boat now hoping that I'm on a draw of some sort. Anyways we check back. The river is the deuce of spades and once again he checks. With enough showdown here um, I feel like sometimes I'm beat by a7 a lot actually um, but there's no way a7 is really folding now given the action. So I check it back. He shows us 3-5 of spades. All right, we're going to take this one down. I guess he was check raising with the pair and gut shot here, um, but we'll take it down with top pair. King queen of clubs in the hijack is the next hand, and we're playing seven handed in this spot. Player to my right opens it up to $15. I've been card dead for at least like an hour plus. I literally haven't played a hand in over an hour, which is tough for me. So I'm trying to take advantage of my pretty nitty image. I three bets of $45. It folds all the way around to him and he makes the call for 45. Heads up to a flop, which comes ace seven deuce rainbow. He checks to us and on an ace high dry flop, pretty good spot to just down bet. I size to $35 and he makes the call, unfortunately. So uh, let's try to hope to improve somehow. The turn is a deuce. This doesn't do much for us, and when he checks to us, I don't think we have to barrel and be super hyper aggressive, so I check it back. River's the three of diamonds, and he sizes up for a massive amount of a $5 bet. <laughs> well, I've got nut nothing, um, and I guess with this $5 bet, it's a little embarrassing, but we're going to fold and save myself 5 bucks and uh, use this $5 to get a coffee at Dunks or something like that later on. Um, yeah, we're folding, but just thought that that was pretty funny, trying to go for some thin value. So about two hours later, we get this hand of 10-9 of hearts in plus one. We have an under the gun limp, and here I raise it up to $20. There are two calls of this 20, then the limper makes the call as well, so four ways to a flop. We're really playing these pots multi-way. Flop is 9-5 deuce rainbow. 
Action checks to me and flopping top pair. Easy C bet for us. We size to $55. Only the player to my left makes the call for $55 and we're going to a turn. The turn is pretty interesting. So the river burn gets exposed accidentally, which is the jack of hearts. So now with that exposed, the dealer shows the actual turn, which is the jack of diamonds. Very unlikely that anyone has a jack here in this situation. That was just a really interesting thing to note to happen here. So with a pair of nines um, with not the best kicker in the world, I decided to just check. The player on my left now throws out a bet of $120. Like I said, very unlikely he improved a jack nine here. But uh, with my weak kicker here with just a 10, I feel like I'm just bluff catching a lot. Not really sure what's going on. But um, I almost wanted to fold here on this turn, but I put in the call for 120 and evaluate a river. The river is the ace of diamonds, so the backdoor flush draw does get there. I'm here just hoping to get to showdown and hoping the action goes check check. But unfortunately, he does throw out another bet of $265. I'm just very confused as to what kind of hands he has. This is unfortunately just a very clear-cut fold, but I don't think he's ever value betting King-9 this heavily, especially when this Ace comes. I guess he could have Ace-9. Um, I feel like with this larger sizing, he's polarized to more sets or flushes, or and there's no real bluffs that I can find um, calling on the flop and continuing on this run out here. So it's a pretty easy fold, but I'm just very curious as to what he could have. I guess he can have the very rare ace nine or jack nine. I don't really see king nine betting this hard. Next spot we actually play, we pick up our favorite hand once again, five seven suited. There's an on the unstraddle and I'm in plus one. Uh, like I said, I've been super carded and I'm getting really bored. So I just open limp, which is horrible. Uh, the player to my left also limps or calls the $6, and now the middle position player raises it up to $41. It folds to me, and, you know, I've won a hand before with 5-7. Why not try it again? That's really my mentality. Pretty donkey mentality, but yeah, I make a call. Pretty donkey call. Anyways, heads up to a flop out of position. The flop is 6-deuce-3-rainbow. Um, on this board that heavily favors my limp calling range, um, I check. He throws out a bet of $55, and I flop this gutter ball with a board that heavily favors me. Uh, I'm just going to be making the call and planning on bluffing later streets. We're off to a turn, which is the four of clubs. Wow, that's a bink. Thank you, dealer. I check, and once again, he throws out a bet of $115. Here, uh, I actually expected him to check a lot of his overpairs and the majority of his range. A lot of overpairs on a four-liner on a board like this, um, he should probably just be checking back unless he has a hand that doesn't have any showdown. Um, so maybe some sort of ace-x of clubs draw. With that said, not really putting him on too many overpairs. I raise, I put in the check raise and not slow play this. I raise it up to $450, considering that he has a massive, massive stack. I have 2200 in front of me and he covers me. So obviously when we get there with these stone cold nuts, we're trying to get stacks in. This 450 sizing is hopefully trying to charge ace-king, ace-queen of club's hands, or maybe a bluff catching over pair that can be a little too sticky. Anyways, he tanks for a long time, but ends up folding aces face up. Cracking aces here once again, but uh, unfortunately, no more value. Last hand of the night. When I tell you I'm getting bored, I'm, I'm telling you I'm getting bored. There's a button straddle and I'm in the small blind. I decide to blind raise to $12. And funny enough, the big blind now blind calls. And somehow I actually pick up a hand this time. I have ace queen. The button makes the call as well. And me and the big blind obviously do not have an option. We're going three ways to a flop. The flop is queen three three two spades. Um, top pair, top kicker. I lead out for $25. The big one who also blind called pre makes the call. So we're going heads up to a turn in a uncapped range for the both of us. Um, so the turn comes the four of diamonds. Uh, we're pretty friendly with each other. Um, he says that he can only call $10. And here with such a strong hand, usually I would size up to $50. But um, I'll be a little friendly, half friendly, and bet 15 can't give him any discounts, can't give him a discount of 10 bucks. He's got to charge 15, and he makes the call for 15. 
The river is the seven of diamonds, and once again, he says that he can only call $15. Well, we'll just be friendly. Um, these, these are some weird dynamics in this 1-3 game. Um, I size to 35, just a little more than 2x of what he said. Um, with this $35 bet, he does make the call. We show our premium ace queen, and we're good. Ship this bad boy pot over to us. Just got back home and uh, recording this outro here. So four sessions in a row, it's gone super well so far. Uh, we played four, five and a half hours in the game for 1500, out for 2340, 2430. So pretty good day once again, four back to back to back to back sessions. Uh, so Houston's treated me well so far. Uh, the action's pretty good. Just tonight was pretty tough. I was car dead for literally like three straight hours. Didn't play a single hand, and yeah, that's kind of tough, but I eventually had to not catch as many cards today, but still a positive session. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. We're wrapping up this one. I think I have one more Houston video to come tomorrow. I'm going to play five, five days in a row, five sessions in a row. Going to be a whole lot of poker, and after that, I'm heading to Vegas for the first time, so we're probably gonna play a few sessions there just to check out what it's like. I've never been to Vegas, so I might as well just head out there since uh, I already left my house and we're in Houston meet here. So that's it. Leave a like if you enjoyed, especially if you made it this far in the video. Um, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm sure we'll try to run it up again last day in Houston.